This is Prince Shango, and you're now listening to Three Count Podcast. You should really pay attention, because I'm watching you. <laughs> you want to play? I All of your hate won't change none. I who you think you are and who I am. Because, just like another promotion out there, we are live it's almost like kind of want to do like the welcome everybody to but i don't really want to because you know that's not how we do things here so welcome everybody to another great edition of the three count podcast well you know we do uh we do a, we do a live stream over what happened yesterday and i have to say what happened yesterday uh was monday night raw and uh yeah it was a it was a show First, before we get into all the everything, what did you guys think of it? I'll let you go first. Jeremy is up first. Or he's frozen. I don't know. Uh, uh, he might be doing All right, I'll go first. All right. So, uh, for me, it didn't feel like a post-SummerSlam show. Like, I mean, there was, like, some cool things, but I don't know. It just felt like Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can agree with that. Like, a go-home show, it wasn't really much of a go-home show. Yeah, so it was uh, – because, I mean, I enjoyed SummerSlam, but, like, this, this was, like – because I watched it in parts. I watched the first half, went to work, and then came home this morning and watched the second and it was just like uh, uh, it was all right like it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't like the worst thing ever but it was all right yeah i have to agree it was it was okay um but this was supposed to be a go home show for payback you're right and i'd say it, it didn't feel like that either we didn't have it anything going for this well i mean like they had to hurry up and build stuff for this show like right we low-key saw like stories get started really quick and then like get I... out. <laughs> yeah it was weird it, it, was... it was weird i mean when we get into talking about it there is like like the women's stuff i enjoyed um I thought I was going to enjoy the main event, but of course, somebody had to ruin it, or somebody's had to ruin it. Yeah. Um, I kind of felt like that should have happened earlier. Better yet, it probably would have been better off if it happened in the women's title match than, I don't know, I think it would have had more impact if it happened in the women's title match than the, than the last match. Maybe. Because I think it would have shown more of they don't give a fuck. It would have been like, oh, they they don't give a fuck who they go after, male or female. You know what I mean? I think it just would have had a bigger impact if it happened to the females and not the main event. That's right. just kind of how I feel. So. Yeah, it's funny because like, I know Jeremy like wants to say his piece, but you can still see like his camera is still kind of pixelated out. He looks like he's been attacked by retribution. So let's get into this. Talk. Let's get into this, right? So we kick off Raw with a recap of SummerSlam. Mind you, SummerSlam was actually a really good show. No, 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 no. Can we talk about it, Pix- pixelated Grimes? Yeah, you're, you're so no, breaking no, up. No, 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 no. I thought we were going to go down the rundown here, guys, and am I still pick insulated? Yeah, we can't yeah. see you. <laughs> can you hear me, though? We can hear you. Can you... No, now we really can't hear you. Oh, <laughs> uh, you might have to jump back out and jump back in. <laughs> we'll, we'll give him an opportunity. This is a cool Yes. Yeah. Everything was perfectly fine. 
Let me talk about you. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> so, yeah. like we said, right? We'll get his. We'll get Jeremy's opinion when he gets back in. So let's get let's get this right first, right? So, mind you, as you saw the host, right? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller, of course, with the super villain himself, Damien Fatal, and then you saw Jeremy Showtime Grimes, who will be popping back on as a running here in a second. So we'll give him a three, two, one. Oh, look, here comes his name. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> and my still pick. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still pretty bad. <laughs> We don't get through this. I need to get some Wi-Fi or something. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Um, You're fine. Because I'm really kind of curious to hear Showtime's uh, opinion on Oh yeah, right. Monday Night Raw. Like, yeah, he, he seems we dive like into he everything. was not happy. Yeah. Oh no, he sounds like he's not happy at all. I mean, I don't blame him because, like I said, it was for a post go home show. It was uh, it was shaky at best. It was definitely shaky at best. When you have to do a post show of SummerSlam and a go home show for Payback, like you have like this massive clash, and you're not doing anything to like help anybody around. <laughs> no, you're not. But I mean, let's. So I'll wait, and then once Jeremy gets back in, he can start talking. We'll uh, we'll get into it. But we're gonna talk about the. So we recap SummerSlam, as I said, right? And then from the from the recap, um, Drew came out. Still, your WWE Heavyweight Champion. Um, hey, look who it is. He's like an actually. I'm pixelated. You're not pixelated. <laughs> uh, so Cliff, let me stop you real quick. I know we've talked about a lot already. Um, <laughs> First of all, how disrespectful that you didn't go down the rundown. You know, who oh. cannot be okay? the Don, the man, the myth, the legend, whatever his name is, who cares? I'm Jeremy Showtime Grimes. I got three things to say about Raw last night. One, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be honest. It really sucked. Um, two, hi, Lexi. I'm your biggest fan. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Um, I love you. Uh, and three, congratulations on the red dog for not having to get surgery. <laughs> Yay. Yay. It was, it's, it's, it's still an abdomen tear, but you know what? It's better than knowing I don't have to spend the next three to six weeks all hunkered up in a bedroom and like crying about how I don't get to hit up a wrestling ring. So yes. But yeah, so for a post show go home show like we were saying it was there was so much to like tie in and like put together it was just it, the task was almost impossible and clearly for a three-hour show it was so let's start us off right we are start off with going with uh drew coming in cutting his promo talking about how he's still the champion and blah 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 and that you know he he beat the best wrestler from the greatest wrestling match and this, that, and the other. It was a long winded promo. Essentially, what you got out of it was that Drew was now claiming that he was the best wrestler in WWE. And as he left uh, and turned his back, you know, does his pose with the title, Randy Orton attacks. Um, they start beating, they start getting into the fight. They go to the back. Randy Orton uh, punts. <laughs> punts. I'm going to put it like that. <laughs> he punted. Uh, he punted Drew in the face and then uh, came missed, back. Missed yo, that he, field for West Virginia. Yo, he whiffed the second punt so badly. I was like, Pat McAfee is going to be upset with this. <laughs> <laughs> Wide left. Wide left. Yo, shout out to Matt Jackson for his tweet back to <laughs> Randy Orton. Like, it was a great tweet. I have to be honest, man. It was a, it was a great caption. Um, if you guys didn't know, uh, Randy Orton did tweet out to uh, Matt Jackson of the Young Bucks talking about how, you know, 
say hi to a bunch of other people and pretty much word for word that's what Matt Jackson said back to Randy Orton so I was very much appreciative of that um so yeah Drew got punted twice um and then he was able to kind of walk it off Raw did continue on and they talked about you know Uncle Keith was going to be on the show he was making his debut Keith Lee was making his debut the limitless one um and you know he was coming up the first match which I have to be honest, I was kind of disappointed because the first match didn't come until 45 minutes into the show. And at that, Whoa. and I'm not saying anything wrong with this match in particular, right? Because this is a match that I was looking forward to. But we got Bailey versus uh, Shayna Baszler. Uh, this was a match I was looking forward to. And for what I got, it was okay. As we have our third run in on the show so far. <laughs> Well, okay, so I get why they did it, unfortunately. They, the match, okay, so the match should have, the match should have finished without the run-in until at the very end to right. set up what they were setting up. But at the same time, I guess they were trying to protect Shayna a little and Bailey. Monday Night Raw sucked. Wow. <laughs> oh, and there, and there, and there's, there's, there's Chaz. And there's the dog. <laughs> well, uh, we were already, already, we're already past what your initial thoughts were. We're way past that. But one thing that we didn't mention, right, was that prior to this to this match, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler kind of had like a little run in, and then Shayna Baszler went to her match. Um, from there, what we ended up seeing was the actual match. Now, Damien, to your point, there should have been like it shouldn't a run in should have happened, but it should have happened kind of like further down the match. Shouldn't that? But what we ended up seeing was Nia Jax coming in, interfering in a match. Um, but what I really thought was kind of odd was Shayna and Nia are, like, throwing hands at each other. And then they, like, realized that Bailey and Sasha were in a ring and, like, wanted to join forces. And, like, both are staring a hole at the Women's Tag Team Championships, which I was like, these championships have no value in WWE at all. Like, and I'm sorry, because I love all the women from all the roster, like from Raw, SmackDown, and NXT, but the women's title has been devalued so much that I almost forgot that Sasha and Bailey had those titles. It's because they're not defending them like they should. Right. Like, that's really what the problem is. They need to go. It's cool that Bailey and Sasha had all those titles, but at the same time, they weren't defending them like they should be. Therefore, those titles need to lead them and go to a team that will go to all brands and defend them. So now I want to tell having, you. having see having like you know Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler as a team is kind of fucked up. Um, like really, on if you really put it on paper, who's going to beat those two? On all the brands, like really cool. Better wrestlers. Hey. <laughs> so, like, I, wanna... I mean, you, you could put combinations together, yeah, but like, in theory, who though? First of all, Shayna Baszler is the real Raw Women's Women's Champion. She should have beat Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. I'm still salty about it. It's stupid. It's dumb. It's bad television. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Second of all, there's not a tag team in WWE in the women's division better than the Iconics. Why they lost the title has baffled me from day one. So I don't disagree with you that. I don't disagree. Why would you put Nia Jax out there to hurt another talented female wrestler and have them leave to go to Japan too? Insert Kyrie. I'm sorry. I'm not invested in it. If I actually watched Raw, which I don't because I watch good television, I would have <laughs> it off yeah. <laughs> well all right so now that we know that jeremy didn't watch monday night Raw. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so the two like, kind of like look like they're kind of trying to make an alliance but then we move on to kevin owens who's backstage kind of looking for um alistair black he finds him in a room asks him if he's gonna be on the show because he didn't hear a response from him um and then we go to commercial break when we come back from commercial break, it is the Kevin Owens show. Um, he brings to Alistair Black, the interview. They're talking about, uh, 
you know, Alistair losing an eye. He came out with like a patch on, like the whole head wrap thing. Um, but when we saw, what we ended up seeing was uh, he eventually attacked Kevin Owens, kicked him in the abdomen, dropped him, and then hit him with a black mask, put out Kevin Owens. Obviously, we we're going to get a heel black, uh, Alistair Black, which, you know what, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of all about it. I do like seeing Alistair Black with like, you know, a, a bad side to him because he was a bad dude, period. So to yeah. see him, like, as a heel again, I'm, I'm very grateful for this. Yeah, so, I am too. I'll go ahead. I, I watched the highlights, okay, Cliff? I just don't – I don't give them the viewership that they deserve or they don't deserve. Um, that's going to be the best match of payback, and I don't even know the rest of the card. Which, why are we having another – why are we having another pay-per-view the week after SummerSlam? Oh, because SummerSlam didn't matter, apparently. <laughs> Yo. I we we, we and are we still doing the whole eye patch thing seriously? Like Ray Mysterio got his eye taken out and it comes out with one eye working again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a where you know what we could talk about all the, the plot holes that are going on, but as we start breaking down more of this, we'll talk. We'll get into it. I'm glad to see that Alistair I Alistair Black's eye is back in the socket and the retina was attached and there was no like damage done to it, structural damage, as well as Rey Mysterio. So they get to wear their eye patches until, you know, otherwise noted, because that's what we're getting. W. So once we get past, so mind you, we've already talked that 45 minutes into Raw, we got our first match. After that was another almost 45 minutes before we got into our fatal four-way with R-Truth, Tozawa, Cedric Alexander, and Shelton Benjamin. For the twenty four seven title, um, I forgot that happened. I can't even lie, man. I did not enjoy this match at all. It was garbage. It was crap. It was, it was crap. No, it thanks, was garbage. Thanks, Chaz. It should have never happened. It should have never happened. It shouldn't have. The dumpster fire. The championship that should never be on TV. It should be off TV for twenty four seven because it's garbage. <laughs> This is my favorite show so far that's happened. Um, anyway, so Tozawa came out on top. He is the new 24-7 champion, and he took off while all of his ninjas were getting beat up. Um, I'm not going to lie. I thought that was kind of funny, like his ninjas always getting involved and then just getting their asses kicked. Um, after that, Randy Orton was getting interviewed, talking about why he attacked uh, Drew McIntyre in the, you know, behind the scenes. Um, and then eventually when uh, Randy Orton came back from commercial break and he was in – the ring. Um, once he was in the ring, he was talking about how he was the best and how he promised that he was going to deliver an RKO and a punt, but obviously it wasn't meant to be. So what ended up happening was the man himself, the limitless one, showed up to the ring. And you know what? He has new music. He has new gear. I don't really care. I was just happy to see Keith Lee on Raw. So I get let me stop you. There. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay, man, you go. All right, so no, you I, go this time. You let all right. me go. All right, so I, all right, was I a bit upset about the music a little bit? Yeah, but I get why they changed it. It's one of those things where it's like, all right, it fitted him in NXT. I'm not sure if it'll fit like now. So I get it. It was good to see him though. Um, I, I'm gonna have to disagree. I'm gonna have to disagree. I think it's just like Nakamura's music, where it's like it was great, and then you added the stuff in so the fans can't sing along. Way to take, way to take all the fun out of it, Mister PG thirteen TV series. Okay. Second of all, Keith Lee is in great shape for being a bigger man. Why the hell is he gotta wear? A, oh, excuse my language. A T-shirt while wrestling. This is the WWE where we're supposed to strive on having athletes and they're not supposed to be t-shirt guys. But we have Keith Lee, who is probably one of the best athletes on the main roster now. And about to go into a segment with the best thing that Raw has going on with Randy Orton, who is, you know, if Randy Orton's the best thing that you got going on with Raw, the rest of the talent needs to step up, okay? Randy Orton's been there for how long now? Over 20 years. And you're going to tell me the rest of the, the roster just can't be like, well, you know what? Well, maybe I should give that a try, you know, if it's going to work out. No, they're just going to sit back, they'll thumb up their bum, and just be like, 
well, go ahead, Randy. Go get 14, 15, and 16 and wrestle John Cena at WrestleMania because, um, you know, that's what we all wanted. Yeah, eight years ago. Hey, I love speaking. Randy Orton. I love what he's doing. I love the whole legend killer. I'm upset that they changed Keith Lee's music. Um, I want to be able to sing along. Um, I can't. Um, and why is he wearing a T-shirt? All right. Well, speaking of T-shirts, G Postal wants to know um, if he can get a T-shirt like yours, Jeremy. Just want to put that out there. That's a that's a comment that we got. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, also, you know it's funny, man, because CFO dollar sign like obviously they're not attached anymore to WWE, and WWE has like asked all the wrestlers to like give up those name or like those songs, and so apparently, you know Keith voluntarily like gave up his song that came up from them. So that's kind of the reason why they changed it. Obviously, Vince McMahon is not a fan of like guys who look like they're out of shape. So maybe that's the reason why we have them in shape. The one thing I kind of had an issue with was like the shorts. Cause it, if you're looking from a distance, it looks like a skirt, even though it's supposed it to does be look like a skirt. That's what I said. It does look like a skirt. When I first saw it, I thought my man was wearing a skirt. I said, why is my uncle wearing a skirt? My uncle Keith does not wear a skirt. What are you so mad for? Quit yelling. Damn. I'm sorry. You're an angry black man. I just got out of the I just got out of class yelling at kids. Paul's going to be mad. So I'm still. You're, you're so yelling like I'm an still, angry I'm, black I'm man. Still, What's up with that? I'm anyway. still at like a, at like a 12. <laughs> Keith, Keith, Keith cut his promo, and I'm not going to lie. It was a really good promo. I'm glad that he was able to kind of like get across the point. Uh, what we ended up getting, though, is that he wanted to challenge Randy Orton to a fight. Randy said maybe later. Um, and then Garza, and then that's kind of how the segment ended. We got back in. We saw Garza was talking to, you know, the Bachelorette chick and uh, Charlie. Anyway, so that ended up being a part where that kind of played into the story where Angel Garza and Montez Ford had a match. Um, Montez Ford is an amazing talent. I'm going to just put out there. And I hope at one point in time he's going to become the next WWE champion because God, man, that dude is super talented. Oh, yeah, you know, and does not push African American talent. Right, I was I was gonna say that. Yeah, <laughs> it would be wonderful if cousin Montez gets the WWE Championship run, but he won't because Vince McMahon does not like black people. Wow! Way, I just <laughs> happened to see I just happened to see this, but G Postal said no skirts. <laughs> said Keith Lee doesn't wear skirts or skirts. <laughs> so. Hey, look, he is gonna have a long, illustrious career where the top thing he's ever going to win is the U.S. championship. And it's not Keith Lee's fault because he's talented. But once again, the old man, Chaz, finished the sentence for me. Does not like Negroes. <laughs> so, wow. We're going to jump, we're going to jump into, back into this match with Garza and Ford. <laughs> yeah. so anyway, so as we're getting in there, right, uh, Ford won off a of distraction because, you know, Garza was too busy staring at the bachelorette and getting taken out by Ivar um, and a turkey leg, which, I mean, it's cool. I, I dig it, so whatever. You know, but about those plot holes, this all story would be great and everything if the WWE didn't, like, post that Angel Garza just recently got married. Yeah. To someone that's not the bachelorette chick. Right. So why is he still flirting with Charlie, too? Like, I don't get it. Oh, because you know, you know those, their type, you know, that that's just the way they are. Right. Oh, well, we've been canceled up in here. <laughs> we haven't been canceled yet, man. I'm, I'm surprised. So anyway, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler have a discussion in the back about the Women's Tag Team Championship. And, you know, Nia was like, hey, you need to follow my lead. It's what we do. We do it my way. And then she got smacked in the face. And that's kind of what that happened. Um, after they leave, we end up seeing – uh, Ruby Riot. We saw Liv Morgan get joined by Bianca Belair as they get ready for their six woman tag match, which we saw come after the commercial break versus the Iconics and Selena Vega. Mind you, I didn't have an issue with this match. It was quick, but it definitely showcased Bianca Belair, which I'm going to be honest, I was very much appreciative of seeing that happen. Jeremy, stop shaking your head. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. First of all, Shayna Baszler deserves better. She should be the Raw Women's Champion. I'm going to say it again. I don't care. Second of all, you have such great talent. You got Ruby Riot, who could – 
be a women's champion. You got Liv Morgan, who we repackaged and then decided, oh, this is too good. Let's go back to her old stuff because that always works. Repackaged again. And then you got Bianca Belair, who should be fighting for the women's championship instead of being in some rinky-dink six women's tag match. You got the Iconics, who should be holding the tag straps. And then you got Zelina Vega, who is a talented wrestler, but never gets the chance because all she gets to do is be Andrade's mouthpiece because he hasn't finished Rosetta Stone yet. <laughs> True. True. I, mean, I can't even deny that. There's, there's no lie in that. I mean, him and Charlotte are still working on his English very, very hard. Uh, I see. Come on, Charlotte. Let's get let's get it together. I do enjoy looking at I do enjoy looking at the chat and just seeing like the chat goes on. So true. WWE is lost when it comes to how to book long term. What makes realistic sense? And then uh, G Postal says facts, Jeremy. So yeah, so that's the thing. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna move on. We gotta keep going. So anyway, in this match, it was showcased that Bianca Belair was um, gonna be dominant in this matchup. And she was, man. I definitely enjoyed watching her do her thing. Um, again, Zelina Vega takes the pin. I don't know if it's like a big – I don't know how big of a thing I would say. Um, Zelina is – she's very talented, but she's always going to be the person who gets pinned in these matches. And I guess to keep the Iconics looking strong to future tag championships, I don't know. It's, it's a thing, I guess. Um, so once we get past that, we get into – Cedric and Ricochet backstage doing an arm wrestling contest, which, again, yeah, why? Why is this a thing? Um, it makes no sense to me, and I just, I don't know, man. I get that MVP is, like, low-key trying to, like, recruit. Um, he's trying to recruit Cedric into the Hurt Business, but – I don't know, man. I feel like this this whole thing has lost like all its all its steam. I was all about like the Air Force Ones when they were coming up, but lately, like they're not even being showcased. Mustafa Ali's not even around. Like I just I don't get it, man. I just don't. I'll tell you what's to get. Vincent Kenny McMahon does not book Chaz finishes. Negroes. Well. <laughs> 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 all seriousness like ricochet came in through nxt took the took the world by storm cedric alexander is such a talent through the the you know the the cruiserweight class and even uh 205 live back whenever that was a thing i don't even think that's a thing anymore it might be and if it is i don't watch it because i watch good television not terrible television um and if vince guy's hands in the cookie jar it's it's i mean if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck it's probably a duck if it's not it's a penguin if it's not that you should probably run anyway um yeah no arm wrestling what is this is it brock lesnar versus zach gowan again like i'm not invested in this no i'm i wasn't either and then we even come back from commercial break and what we saw was uh apollo cruz versus bobby lashley in an arm wrestling contest in which i was like what what do we do? We have yeah. arm wrestling going on. We clearly WWE, like fell off the rails at you know yesterday <laughs> after SummerSlam because they had no idea what they were doing today for Raw, um, and it was it's obviously like we said the show was just disappointing all around. Um, he must have bumped his head off of that drop off the WrestleMania tower. Like I know there was a pad down there, but he had a whatever screws weren't loose got even looser. I am so sick and tired of watching. If Bobby Lashley doesn't just beat the hell out of Apollo Crews like we know he can, it's a damn. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so I don't even want to talk about this segment anymore. We have the next one that's coming up. Solana and Nat, Natty were doing their ceremony for Mickey James. By the way, I just want to go out there and say this right off the jump. I don't really I, – I don't care what you guys have to say. Mickey James looks amazing. <laughs> Not in the ring. Shut your mouth. <laughs> oh. Showtime's about to get this ass whooped. <laughs> Nobody talks about my future ex-wife that way, man. <laughs> okay, Cliff. I don't, I don't care if she's married to the 10 pounds of gold champion, okay? Mickey James, is, is, that's, my, that's my woman right there. <laughs> I anyway. like this subject. Yeah, whatever. So anyway, Mick James comes out. She does the she does the the mitt kick to both of uh, both women, 
And then we move on to everybody's favorite segment that starts at 10 o'clock, Raw Underground. <laughs> don't, don't be like that, man. Don't be like that. I'm okay. kind of enjoying it. I'm enjoying Raw What's the point of it? What's the point of it, though? Entertainment. It, no, it's not. No, it's We're not, Damien. Right. Look, it's man. not entertaining. It doesn't We're make sense. Not. It does not make sense at all. They're gonna make a belt for Raw Underground. It's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, see that? The, see then I'll be disappointed. But for what it is, I, I'm enjoying it. Like I'm enjoying seeing Dolph do something different. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying seeing these people do something different. That's all. Yeah. I mean, Damien, it's basically like, hey, let's just take everybody who's sitting in catering and throw them in a in a non cage cage match. Like I said, I liked it better when Shakara did it, whenever uh, Josh Barnett did it, or even Matt Riddle did it. How original WWE! Still something else. It's terrible. If I want to watch fighting, I'll go watch the UFC. <laughs> the thing about Underground is though, it lasts for like thirty minutes and has enough time for me to go take a uh, a shit, a shower, and uh, brush my teeth. <laughs> So, Lizzie, uh, really quick, G Postal says, uh, maybe some of these writers can go back and watch the network for NWA, AWA, WWF, and et cetera, and learn how to book. Vince still has to write off on all of this, man. So it is what it is, okay? Yeah. Um, <laughs> secondly, he also wrote in, hey, brother, I would be a fan, but she has been very rude multiple times. Mickey James loved her career highlights last night. Yeah, I until Mickey James is rude to me, I'm still a fan. It's just going to be a thing. Because <laughs> you haven't talked to her. <laughs> so, anyway, Raw, uh, Raw Underground, right? So, the, her business shows up. They say they want to get into it. Shane opens the door for them. They get in. And like we said, they start crushing people, right? Um, they crushed Ziggler, Ivar, Eric, which, I mean, that what those two kind of hurt. Dolph, I mean, I like Dolph, but Dolph wanted to get into that matchup. Ivar and... Uh, Eric, I mean, it's the Viking Raiders, your former WWE champions. Like, you're just going to go in there and just destroy them. And then it destroyed the rest of the hurt, like, the rest of the the fans around. I'm just wondering, like, if they took any of the money that those guys were betting on. Because I feel like that's what happens in the underground segment. Um, yeah, so we get into – we get into probably what could have been the best match of the night, but unfortunately it was not. So Keith Lee versus Randy Orton got, uh, got started, which I'm very much excited to once again, see Keith Lee on the main roster. Um, the biggest, they had like a great back and forth. Um, yo, Randy was putting over a lot of moves that Keith was t- hitting. Uh, yeah, he was. What we ended up seeing though is that Drew uh, ran in, caused a disqualification. and Another one. Another one. And, you know, Randy won by DQ over Keith Lee. Uh, not, not, not a fan. Not a fan. Uh, was a fan of the match, not a fan of the fish. A lot of matches on Raw, and this is what was my problem was, is that a lot of matches on Raw just ended with, like, DQs. Like, or non-finishes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for That's some reason. every week. I know. Well, well, this one was, like, every match, though. Like, literally every match on the card last night had some kind of fucked up screwy finish. And it was, it was a bit much. I think that's what took me out of it. Oh, yeah, we I, asked me hi to Prince Shango. He just said hi. What's up? <laughs> I actually, I'm okay if it was only one DQ and it was this match because obviously you don't want Keith losing on his first night and Randy's red hot. So, oh, God. I matched then. I really hate to say this, but it was smart. Oh, man. It was smart on their end. But everything else they do isn't smart. So, like, if you make one good decision and ten bad decisions, is it really, like, do you have good morals at that point? Or are you just, like, blind? Is it the blind leading the blind and you're just getting one thing right, finally? Um, Keith Lee should be able to hit almost anything on Randy Orton. I mean, he's Keith Lee. He's that much bigger than Orton, and I think he's Keith Lee once again. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, facts, facts. Everybody should be basking in his glory. 
Oh, we can't do that no more because they changed his damn music. It says right off the jump. Oh, one time. Ooh. It's whatever, man. It's at least we get the one, okay? I can call. Yeah, him you could have got none. You could have got. You couldn't have gotten none at all. Yeah, you could have got some random the music. Song. They could have changed this whole thing called the Viking Experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no. Basket anything. They said, and introducing now Lee Keith, and then we all would have just had to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. I could have just called him Keith. That, that's what it's going to be. Give it two weeks. His name's too long. <laughs> <laughs> Keith. It's Lee. Lee's out here now. So anyway, after this, after uh, Drew gets in, interferes, their fight keeps going on to the back. We see Drew kind of walking. Um, then he gets punted in the face again. Uh, so it's his third punt now <laughs> that he has taken. And, and he uh, now has CTE. And now he yeah. accept nothing less. CTE is a real thing for him. Um, and then, like, the match is kind of like – they just kind of move along, and they go to our next match, which our last match of the night – which, well, no, I'm sorry, our second to last match, um, Asuka versus Sasha Banks, which was a repeat from SummerSlam, but it was with Lumberjills this time. Not Lumberjacks, because it's all females, Lumberjills it was. So in this match, uh, great action, but then again, this match didn't hold up to what the SummerSlam match did. And if you guys want to oh, see- Oh God, definitely not. We're gonna do a live SummerSlam review uh, on Sunday, actually. So you can actually check us out then. Um, but yeah, so this match goes on and on. Um, you know, Bailey's kind of being the heel as she is. She's like keeping everybody apart, but she's beating up Asuka. And then she like grabs a steel chair. But by the time that she grabs a steel chair, um, it's kind of late. And also we just see the Asuka lock and eventually Sasha taps and she, you know, loses again. So obviously they took her out of title contention on Raw. She doesn't get her rematch. Yeah, whatever. I saw this match, but it was even better on Sunday night. So that was hey, way better on Sunday night. This was kind I, of a throwaway. <laughs> I should be here. Should be a twenty-six time women's champion. Hey, G Postal says, "Is it just me, or when does anyone get called up to Raw or SmackDown? I get scared for their career." No, you're not the only one. I no. do it every single time. <laughs> Yeah. At this point, I'd be like, I'm not going to Raw SmackDown. Keep me on NXT. That's what Tommaso Ciampa did. Tommaso Mark. Ciampa literally told those guys, like, hey, I don't want to go up. And if I go up, I'm just going to retire. So yeah. no, I don't blame him. Oh. What's that? Tommaso's part of Retribution, though. Is he, though? It's just rumored that he is. I mean, look. And at this point, the whole NXT I development want- is part of Retribution. I want Vince, Bruce Pritchard, and anyone else of the creative product to to bury me because I want them to let me down one last time. <laughs> yes, uh, G. Postle said I say on NXT. Yeah, I would say on NXT too. So all day long. So anyway, we find out backstage that Drew was taken to the medical, like he was taken to a local medical facility of course. Uh, for. Uh, possibly brain bleeding. Let me let me just say like the one thing I cannot stand about WWE. What I cannot stand. Well, it's, it's there's a lot of things you can't stand about WWE. This is one in particular. The word local medical facility. You mean hospital? Like, nah. He went to urgent care. <laughs> well, I, okay, so there's a reason they say it though. I well, I know Vince hates it. First, he hates saying the word hospital. Well. Usually, okay, so when they used to say hospital on the air, all the local hospitals would be filled with fans and shit showing up to try to see these wrestlers, even though we know they don't really go anywhere, unless they're really hurt, like right. legit hurt. So that's why they do it, because it kind of just puts a broad horizon of where they actually have gone, which will make most likely less people to be trying to show up there. So that's part of it. And the other reason, like you said, they're fucking big kids. Well, I just, like, it just annoys me because I'm like, yo, like, it's 2020. If you say local medical facility, we know you're going to the hospital. Like, Vince, get over here. Yeah, it. It's never going to happen. It went to the right time. Yeah, I'm like. You never know. They could have took him the right time. It's a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> I just, but, like, 
the things that Vince McMahon has like issues with like bugs me, man. Like, how did you not know it was called a burrito and you kept referring to it as a meat wrap? Like, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, the man is in his seventies. Leave him alone. <laughs> He's old. Like you called it a meat wrap for twenty years. You had no idea what it called a burrito. That's my. That's my so, thing. <laughs> when this man finally retires and gives this all up, you know he's probably going to kick the bucket in like two years, right? His body's just going to give up on. So anyway, let's talk about the biggest plot hole of the night, right? So we had Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio versus Seth Rollins and. Buddy Murphy, or Murphy, or Murph, if you're Seth Rollins. Or so anyway, <laughs> he's got all these names now. So anyway, or the Disciple, I guess that's the only one he calls him. Anyway, so as we get into this match, um, great back and forth, forth actions. It's the second time for Seth, uh, for Dominic, uh, his second match, his first time main eventing Raw, which by all means, congratulations to Dominic. I'm very excited for you, and I cannot wait to see your career take off. And by the way, you have – the fourth best frog splash on Raw currently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I said four. I said four. <laughs> said four. Montez. The splash. Let's be real. Montez, right? No, Montez definitely. He's got the best, right? That's the best. Okay. Sasha. Like, it depends Sasha's on the day. Okay, it depends on the day. It does. Um, <laughs> Ray. <laughs> Ray has a great frog splash. And then Dominic, <laughs> let's be real. And everybody was hitting frog splashes too, by the way. I <laughs> noticed that. No key going back. And we saw like, what, three of them? Yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Anyway. Four, maybe? I don't know. I think, it was, I think it was five. I think there was five different people who hit frog splashes last night. And like, oh, nice. I think six people hit it on SummerSlam. Um, anyway, getting into this, right? This last match, uh, lights are flickering, right? And then Retribution shows up. And Seth and Buddy run to the top of the ramp while Dominic is in the center. And then everybody starts to swarm in. Ray runs in to save his son, right? Obviously, being the good father that he is, no, no Goku in this incident, right? So he runs in and he saves his son. And then, like, here's the problem I have, right? And a lot of people are probably going to come back and talk to me about this, and I, I don't care to hear what you say. You mean to tell me that Rey Mysterio, a first, if, if there was a ballot system, he would be a first ballot Hall of Famer in the wrestling community. He's loved by everybody. Nobody is going to come out and save this man, but Braun Strowman will throw a woman off of a gorilla press slam, and everybody will come save his ass in the Thunderdome? That is what we're going with. That's what, so the man who threw a woman is going to be getting saved by the SmackDown roster, but not a single person on Raw is going to save Rey Mysterio or help him? Cliff, Cliff, what? there's a good explanation. Catering was popping on Monday Night Raw, brother. They yeah, we right. have the flyest French toast of all time. <laughs> we're talking surf and turf. We're talking everything. Dude, I heard, I heard, dude, raw catering is off the hook from my understanding. Bro, them Cheerios better be off the chain. That's all I'm saying, man. <laughs> all I'm saying is they're dropping the ball. Dominic needs to turn on Ray. I mean, I actually thought it was going to happen, actually. I don't know. But, like, the way Dominic was looking in that interview, he's kind of he's kind of quiet. Eddie's son is going to beat up Ray. Yo, by the way, that was <laughs> that was a, that was a, we all laugh about it. Sean Rossap on, on his Twitter was like, look at this frog splash by Dominic. And he had like the gif of it like going. I was like, his dad would be so proud. Like I was the first comment in. <laughs> everybody was like, oh, yeah. And then everybody tried to like, you know, break through uh, and try to bite my style. Anyway, G Postal said that wrestling logic is dead. Sure it is, but I'm still pissed off that nobody else wanted to go save Rey Mysterio from getting right? his ass beat all over the place. Not one raw superstar came through to be like, hey, let's go save Rey. Nobody. You mean to tell me that Apollo and Cedric and Ricochet and Mustafa Ali are all sitting over there eating the French toast thinking how great this damn catering is? I'm pissed about this. I have Probably. no, like, you are the baby faces, and you mean to tell me that? Shayna Baszler or 
I don't know, Bianca Belair or Ruby Riot or Liv Morgan, is it going to come out and try to stop? Like, come on, man. Like, hey, well, it's the, we all know that Raw. Meanwhile, the man competing for the WWE Universal Championship is getting his ass beat by himself in the ring. And guess what? AJ Styles came out and helped fight off Retribution. He's a heel. He took out Jeff Hardy's knee before he lost the Intercontinental title on SmackDown. This is like, I'm like, yo, this is grade A bullshit. <laughs> like, all right, so this is my scenario, right? We all know that SmackDown has uh, a solidarity with each other. They work well with each other if they're all faced with, with issues. Raw is every man for themselves. You should know this. <laughs> Clearly. They, Raw is they do not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they, they don't give a fuck about each other. They don't. It's too many of them. They're like, hey, if some of these are taken out, we'll get more TV time. <laughs> I tell you. It's, it's, it's a doggy dog world on fucking Raw. This is why SmackDown's the better show. At least, at least, like, what would have what would have done it for me too is if like the raw superstars were coming out and Seth was like trying to hold them back. You know what I mean? Like Seth and Buddy were like trying to stop them from getting on the ramp. At that point, that I could be like, "All right," because then uh, now he looks like a serious prick. But no, Seth just looks like an asshole because he's like, "I could go down there and help him," <laughs> but then I don't want to get stomped out either. <laughs> right. he's, doing job. he's doing his job, Cliff. Yes. First of all. They deserve to get stomped out, okay? Yeah. yeah. Seth Rollins' yeah. back probably hurts from carrying Dominic in that match of SummerSlam, while Ray just sit outside like the hopeless dad that he is, if he even is the dad, okay? <laughs> Look, he's also, got the papers. He's the dad now, all right? If you had them for this long, they're legally yours. Once you start feeding he's them. He's over 18. He's a, he's a grown man. He signed his own documents. He didn't need Ray's approval. <laughs> Right. Sure. He's Wait. Ray since he's twelve, so I mean it doesn't really matter. Okay. <laughs> All right, man, like that's, that's Raw sucked. It's simple as that. Spoiler alert, tune in for Friday night SmackDown. It's gonna suck too. Pay nine ninety nine a month for the WWE network for what? For it to suck. <laughs> hey man, at least we got it. if I feel you know, I'm glad that people who sign up for the network in August because you got NXT TakeOver, you got SummerSlam, and you got Payback all for free. And they just yeah. cancel your membership. Like, just cancel it. Don't, don't let it go into September and lapse. <laughs> oh, and don't do the Thunderdome stupid stuff. It's basically the live stream, and it's a oh, you can see me on the TV. That's so cool. By the way, that's something else Gar- I want to talk about. Like, Garbage. I, no, no. Actually, I'll be 100. I love the Thunderdome. What I don't like, these... Like, hey, aside from seeing, like, fans put up Fire Velveteen Dream, which I'm not going to lie, I kind of laughed at. St- fans, please, stop, stop it. Like, stop dressing up like a Ku Klux Klan member. Don't put up Chris Benoit's picture. Like, come on, man. Like, that's – No, because you right. should have known that people were going to try to fuck this up for everybody. People are fucking – don't, don't be a fucking scumbag. End of exactly. the day. Wrestling is for everyone but scumbags. Exactly. So leave it to the good people to be able to watch it, and we can shit on it very properly without dressing up like a racist, without putting a murderer on there, whether I think Kevin Sullivan did it or not. And and live beheadings? What kind of sick shit is this? Right. People are fucked up. Yeah, no, people are being stupid and fucked up. Dominic Mysterio uh, is like 14 years old out there wrestling in the ring. You think he wants to see that? On the flip side of it, I in the Thunderdome, I did like seeing the Pikachu. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. No, that was, pretty, popped, that was pretty hilarious. I popped for that. <laughs> see, I, was, I, I, I was like this. I think the Thunderdome is a good idea considering you, you shouldn't have fans in the ring. <laughs> I guess it's a, good, it's a good backup plan for a temporary thing. I think it's a cool idea. I said, my people, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, social media is all at Jeremy Showtime Grimes. I'm out. We're all sucked. That's a wrap. <laughs> and there you go. So now we've got <laughs> the next person. So anyway, guys, yeah, that was that was raw. It was it was it was trash. Yeah, it was it was a two at best. Yeah, maybe, that's, maybe say- that's being nice. 
And this is a go home show for payback and a post show for SummerSlam. Man, nah, one star. Mm-hmm. For me. You get a one star I, for this one. I was look, I was looking more for it. the reason I gave it two stars is because it made me look forward to SmackDown seeing Roman. Maybe I'll give it one and a half because Keith Lee debuted on there. That that might be like its only saving grace. <laughs> Three hours, so, and all I got was, like, four. I got, like, six matches. Four of them ended in DQ. Like, no, man, I'm good. Uh, I'm good with this. Uh, like I said, what, they did, what, three uh, advertisements for SmackDown. Right. We all got to see four. Roman Reigns. Breaking news. Yeah. Roman Reigns returned yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but for the Don, Chaz, the icon, Evans, uh, for Jeremy Grimes, the Showtime, and for the supervillain Damian Fatal, I am your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That was a shitty Raw, and we will catch you guys next time. So either tune into the next episode and be there, or be somewhere else. Ah, oh, that was fantastic, wasn't it? That that Raw was. Hello, Three Count Podcast. If you enjoy what you're watching and you wouldn't mind going out your day to support us, go follow us on Twitter at 3count underscore pod, Instagram 3count pod, and if you want to look drift out like your boy JJ, go to prowrestlingtees.com slash the 3count pod, and it's the number three. Oh, and by the mention, we have a YouTube channel, so go check that out, the 3count podcast. With the number three, JJ out.